All right, fine. Let's go. Uh, we're on chapter four. Chapter four, and Tanya, we need to finish up and get to more details. Okay? We spoke, we're speaking all about really the idea of our existence. That's what really Amuna is. That's what really Kabbalah is. Kabbalah mm-hmm. is understanding our existence. What are we in relationship to God? If we were our, our creation, there's a creator. What's the relationship? Okay, our existence, how are we existing? What does it mean, the unity of God? God, If God is all there is, how are we existing? Because we know that several verses in the Torah, God is all there is, Enod Milvado, the highest meditation ever. We say it twice a day in different words. We say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Mm. And when you go, you actually go out of existence. I think we talked even last time, according to... Rabbi Chaim Velazhin, who was the student of the Vilna Gon, who said when also that my father-in-law concluded after he went through all of the, the um, all of the, uh, uh, the the Nevish Chaim Shar Gimel, so he went, uh, he basically concluded okay, every time you say Hashem's name you kebabke, you out of existence, okay? You become completely nullified. Mm-hmm. And he's going along the same line God willed us into existence. He uttered ten utterances in creation. Those utterances, the letters of those utterances, are in the combination, permutations, gematria, are our life force that gives us our existence. If we were to experience that life force, then our existence as we are here, we would become nullified. And in a sense, really, we are nullified. We are not like the ray of the sun that left the sun. We are like a ray of the sun that's in the sun because there's no spot where God is not. He's everywhere. He is the source. The utterances are still are being said right now. We are the beam, the ray of sunlight in the source. So in one plane of reality, we don't exist. Okay? Yet, what's this, Rabbi? Okay? So we call this simsum, or constriction. Okay? Now, the way how we can have to word this <coughs> constriction, this simsum, is what we call uh, attributes. Attributes. We, saw, we spoke about, we had, I think, the two main attributes that he's discussing. Moshe Rabbeinu made the praise. That's how chapter 4. Chapter 4 actually started with Havaya Kishemish Umagain Hashem Elohim. A sun and a shield is God Elohim. Yudke Vavke Havaya Elohim. Havaya is the sun, the root of our existence, uh, the source, and then Elohim is the shield. Okay? And then he's going to explain that because there's a Hashem who is constantly giving everything its life and its animation every single second. Every single second, we're being willed to into existence. We're living in God's dream. Okay? Yet, we're somehow experiencing an independent existence. Somehow. Okay? So, he ta- calls, he brings from Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu gave a praise to God in four words. Hakel, Hagadol, Hagibor, Vanora. We say it every day in Shimon Esrei. Right? And he focuses on the word Hagadol. Hagadol, we know in the spherotic charts, is that not my phone? In the spherotic charts, okay, um, we know that there are the two attributes which we deal with, are dealing with now, or actually there's seven attributes in all. Go to page, if you have your book. Here we go. Let's go to all of them. If you go to page 35, it's a great thing here. Yeah. Okay, so per page 35, here you go. Okay. So page 35 talks about this, the, the lower seven spherot, and the lower seven spherot, we say, are God's attributes. God's attributes, mainly we're going to focus on this one is chesed, mm-hmm. and this one is called gevura, just opposite that on this column here. Right? 
So when Hashem, when Moshe Rabbeinu was praising God, he says, Hashem, Lecha Hashem HaGadol. Wait a minute. No, that's a different. It's King David. Hakel HaGadol. And he calls Chesed HaGadol. He nicknamed this attribute of kindness. He called it HaGadol. Did we get this last time a little bit? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. So HaGadol is called Chesed Kindness. Why is it called HaGadol? Because here is the very, very concept of God's greatness, something that we cannot fathom. Mm -hmm. We cannot fathom God's greatness because this quality, this is, don't forget, Hashem, God forbid, um, God, we, we, don't, we don't attribute this to Hashem, but God, but HaKodesh Baruch Hu so dresses in these attributes. We speak that like the invisible man who needs to put on clothes in order to have a relationship. God, so to speak, dresses in these qualities in order to have a relationship with us. We always look at the, the ten spherot as the bridge. Okay? So, this is where the world starts. Like we have seven days of creation. This is the very first day. Light was created the first day. And we say also, Moshe Rabbeinu gives us the attribute of Hagadula, because why? God is constantly willing us something from nothing. Okay? And that is an attribute that we cannot fathom. Okay? These, all of these attributes, we say, we really can't fathom them. Okay? We have names for them, because you need something. But other than that, the Sefer Yetzirah calls these attributes Eser Sfirot Bli Ma. Ten attributes without what, meaning without whatness, meaning you cannot figure it out. Okay? They're some kind of vortex. Okay? Some kind of energy. You know it's the Ein Sof. You know it's infinity. And you get only get a flavor of it when, you know, you experience it. Okay? And you still are not going to really be able to put words on it as much as we do put words. It's still beyond our knowing. And the main attribute of Gedula is the fact that God gives us in existence every single second something from nothing. That's called Gadol, HaGadula. Okay? I think that's where we got. And then, I think we're here where it says the circle and the triangle. I'm not sure if that's where we left off, but we're going to get the statement again. We were again. right about to start chapter 5. Oh, I was? That's I finished chapter it. 4? Yes. Yeah, you You're joking. No, I'm not. I did not finish chapter 4 with you. I thought you. we ended right here. No, I didn't. That paragraph. I wrote 720. We're on 297. Oh, and I'm it gonna... is, okay. And it is the yeah. very end. The last I got that paragraph. far? Okay, yeah. good. Good. Okay, that's even better. Okay, good. You even wrote it down. How nice. Well, I have to, my mind, I have to I need that too. notes for myself. Okay, so then the main statement was in moving forward, he says, okay, Hakadola is out of our reach. We can't figure out how we're created something from nothing. We can't figure it out. No creature can, cre can figure out how we're made something from nothing. Because we only know something from something. That's how we don't operate anything like it. It's beyond our ability to fathom. So he says, here comes the comparison. Just like you can't understand this attribute of God that he wills us into existence, something from nothing. So also the fact that we are in an existence, an independent existence, okay, that's called simsum, okay, we can also not figure out, okay? So just like this we can't figure out, also this we can't figure out. In other words, we have no idea why we're enjoying this separate existence. <laughs> Okay? Mm -hmm. It's a quality that God is doing called hiding himself, and we cannot figure it out. Okay? That's really basically the gist of what he's saying. Okay? Yeah. So now we're, and it is not within the scope of the intellect. I think that's where we got left off, right? Mm -hmm. We're all there. Mm -hmm. And it is not within the scope of the intellect of any creature to comprehend the essential nature of the tzimtzum and concealment of the life force, and that nonetheless, the body of the creature being created, ex nihilo, just as this is not with the capacity of any creature's intellect to comprehend the essential nature of the creation of being out of nothing. In other words, it went, he, now he just went the inversion statement, okay? We can't comprehend the contraction, okay? 
It is beyond us. So I brought, I looked at something here, okay? So he says something pretty interesting, an interesting idea, okay? This is in the Perush, okay? Because, listen, we would, we might, we might understand this quality or this attribute of God concealing himself, right? As giving us an independent existence. Hmm. Okay? But the answer is it's not true. Okay? It gives us that impression. It's an illusion. But it's an illusion. Okay? I just didn't get his words, okay? <laughs> so he, in the commentary, since the capacity for tsimtsum emanates from the divine attribute of Gavura, that's this one right here, Gavura, okay? One might erroneously infer that it actually serves to create an independently existing entity, in essence. Not only does the created being regard itself as such, but the creator views it so as well. In other words, you think that the Tzimtzum makes us an independent being. Even from the creator's point of view. Okay? From our point of view, we, d we definitely are in, in it. But also you would think that this attribute of Gavura, a restraint, God holding back and sealing, you would think that also Hashem regards us. Okay? For inasmuch as God causes this concealment and His attribute of Gavura, the ability to conceal, is as real and as effective as His attribute of Gedula, His ability to reveal. So we may mistakenly liken creation to the sun's rays insofar as they exist beyond the confines of the sun globe. We might think that. Forestalling this possible error, the Alter Rebbe now explains that God's power to reveal and His power to conceal are truly one and the same. Hmm. Okay? For revelation and concealment are respectively light, and we're going to see that right now, and vessels. Here's where we're going to get into a very important co uh, concept in the Kabbalah called the vessels and the light, the kalim or and kalim. Okay? Which are fused and complete and total unity. Moreover, in the state in which they exist, in their supernal source, they are not only united, they are one and the same. We'll get into that in a minute. So, the ax so now, now it is the axiomatic that no entity can conceal itself from itself, because that's really kind of strange here, and this is a nice concept. The illustration is actually from the Shulchan Aruch. You know how we wear kippahs on our heads, right? What happens if a person doesn't wear a kippah? I've seen it but somehow I don't know how people would even think it. But all of the, they seem to write about it. What happens if you need to say a bracha, and you don't have a kippah, or anything? So some people would think to take their hand mm. and cover their head, and that would serve as a kippah. But we know that that's not the case. You cannot do that halachically, because you cannot separate yourself with yourself. <laughs> mm. Right. Okay? So therefore you would think that God is like kind of separating himself with himself with the attribute of Gedula. Hmm. Is he separating himself with himself? How can you do that? Okay? Hmm. So the same, he says, the same holds here, true, here too. Since the power to reveal and the power to conceal are essentially one and the same power, which is a manifestation of God's limitless ability, it is impossible for Tzimtzum to bring about a real concealment that will be so regarded when viewed from the divine perspective that, okay, it's impossible. So in other words, God, for God, Tzimtzum, here, just to finish the line, Tzimtzum only enables created beings to perceive themselves, perceive themselves as independently existing entities. God does not view them as this way at all. In God's eyes, right, he cannot take himself and cover himself with himself, the concealment, right? So it's an illusion? Yes. Okay? You're in a, you're in the matrix here, okay? Mm. For real? Since the power to, re uh, just to that line, since the power to reveal and the power to conceal are essentially one and the same power, which is the manifestation of God's limitless, limitless ability, it is impossible for Tzimtzum to bring about a real concealment, okay? From the divine perspective. Now that we even have a, there's a phrase King David himself, with, with you, Hashem, with you, God, darkness is light. Hmm. Okay? So 
but God doesn't see a symptom at all. Okay? It's like taking his hand and covering his hand with his hand. It doesn't work. It just does not part. He doesn't know that. The idea really is, for us now, we have two avenues of possible perspectives of reality. You can view it from down here, okay? And then you can play the little baby games, okay? When you said it first, you said it last. I have to have the last word in, you know? Or you could look at things from God's perspective, which is something that we, is the ultimate challenge, training, to try to th see things from the top down, not from the bottom up. When we see things from the top down, right, you have a whole different perspective of things, okay? Big, big picture. Big picture, but most mainly is like the infusion of emunah. Mm -hmm. Because really, you know, this too is from God. Hmm. Is it not from God? Yes. This is absolutely from God. And then you have to go out through the next program in your brain, the next thought in your brain, which is, okay, gotta be for the good. Gotta be for the good. Definitely a purpose, a big purpose is involved in this. And you gotta come follow through with all of those other thoughts right after you get into the, okay. Okay? And also when we view people, when we look at people, you can look at people with their faults, right? And how do you get to look at them? And you can get caught up in it, and your drama, and then you're all excited, right? And then you can even do something worse and start saying something to the person by criticizing them, right? And then it goes back and forth, and then you're just playing a little baby game. I said to go to bed already. No, it's not time to go to bed, right? Whatever. And then you start arguing. Or... There's a great story from Rabbi Moshe Weinberger. He brings down a great story when he was growing up and his Rebbe didn't like him. He was in the Cheder. His Rebbe did not like him, right? And then it came time, and it was mutual, of course. He didn't like his Rebbe. And then it came time for parent-teacher's conference where you got to sign up. And, of course, his mom notices that, okay, I see you a meeting with this person, this person. How come I'm not? Your Rebbe's not on here. And of course, Rabbi uh, Moshe Weinberger is a small child. It's not really important. <laughs> and just, oh, I'm going. Mom says, I'm going. You know that, I'm going. So she goes. She comes back and she says, that guy's an absolute Russia. <coughs> Russia is wicked. That guy's wicked. Right? Um, I don't know if she said that to Moshe, but I mean, she, he, uh, somehow he heard a conversation and I think with her father, or with his father, right? Um, he had the conversation, that man is, is, is wicked. He, and, and, and her reason was, she, he, the Rebbe, he doesn't know my Moshe. <laughs> he doesn't know my Moshe. Because the mother's looking at it from the top down. Mm. He doesn't know my Moshe. When you look at it from the top down, right? Do you really know the person, Right? Can you really view the person from, you know, Hashem would say, well, you don't know my Lori, right? Or you don't know my Dave, or whatever, right? So you don't, you know, Hashem looks at us, oh, such beaming eyes, with such unbelievable love, right? There is no, there is no concealment, okay? So concealment, in a certain sense, you have to peel off and train ourselves that it's a mask, and it really, in terms of God, it really doesn't exist. By God, the concealment does not exist. Yet, here we are, okay? Somehow enjoying an independent existence, Existence, okay? So now going on, okay? So he says here, the next paragraph, that simtsum, the constriction, contraction, right? And concealing. I don't know why he says two words, Okay? The tzimtzum and the concealing, okay, of the life force is called kalim, vessels, and the life force is called light, okay? Let me just look here. Nick Rabbishem, kalim, okay? So he says here in the Makor, look in the tree of life, in the drush of igulim,
that the whole necessity of the sinsum of the God's contraction is in order to make the aspect of vessels. The way that it is described in the Eitz Chaim, in the book, in the, in the 16th century book of Kabbalah by the Ari, was like this, okay? That really what happened was there was an extension of light, okay? And then there's coarse parts of the light, and then there's the not coarse parts of the same light. And then there's a, a withdrawal of the light, so to speak. Just work with me now in the imagery. When there's this withdrawal, when the light goes back up, it leaves the coarse parts behind, which really was light. But now, since the, the source light, the higher elements of the light, the more refined aspects of the same light, left and went back up, it left those coarse parts of that light to congeal and solidify, so to speak, and become what's called a vessel. A vessel was light, but it's light that really, what happened, it became, so to speak, disconnected from its source, or hidden from its source. The sediment. The sediment, okay? Mm -hmm. Right, so the sediment is what is going to make the clay, which was once light. Okay, and that's how all kalim are made. Kalim, kalim vessels come from a, the withdrawal. Hmm. It's very, it goes into, and bleeds into many areas. Okay, not necessarily just like a physical cup. We need to go into the, the, the psychology of it, the concept of it. Because if you look at it, your mind is a vessel. You need, you need an ability to grasp. You need letters you need a concept in order to grasp something. You hmm. need handles. Otherwise, you're going to be met with infinite light and there's nothing to grasp. Okay? Hmm. So we need something to hold on to. We need vessels. Shalom aleichem baruchim abayim. Okay, you might have to share with David, okay? Welcome back. So the aspect of simsum and hiding is called in the name of kalim. Vessels, because what he says, I did simsum or mutu yesh efsharut elakli litavos. Because through the constriction of light and its reduction, it is possible then for a vessel to have an existence and to be revealed. Because as long as the coarse light aspect of that light is still blended with the refined part, it doesn't have an existence of its own. Mm. It's like the ray of sunlight in the light of the sun. Not only until there's a, some kind of withdrawal is there an ability for there to be an existence of a vessel, of a kli. Okay? Or if there's too much light, then what happens? The kli becomes nullified. Right? It becomes nullified in its reduction and the reducing of its abilities to accept this great light. Okay. So this is the aspect of kalim, okay? Now, we, had it all, we have it all the time, the aspect of a kli. We have it all the time in our lives. You can have it all the time, anytime. Anytime where there's something doesn't go your way. Hmm. Anytime something doesn't go your way, God is making a vessel, okay? And you can have the amun and say, okay, God's making a vessel. The 42 journeys that they journeyed in the desert there were 42 places. And the big word is, according to the Baal Shem Tov, that's every person's life, is those 42 places. Everybody goes through 42 levels until they get to the reaching actualized potential. Okay? And some of those places, they messed up. Okay? What, so what, what was going on with it, with it was each one of those places, there was a spiritual battle. There was a concept to grasp. And, it, and, and at one point in time, they took the Ark of the Covenant and moved it three days' journey from the children of Israel. Right? They took the Ark of the Covenant, the tablets, and moved it three days' journey ahead. So they woke up one morning and going, yeah, okay. And all of a sudden, there's a, there's a group of Levites and they're packing up. And they're going, well, we didn't get any orders or directive to pack up. We're not... You're not leaving. You're not going anywhere. You're staying right here. Well, where, where are you going? This is our treasure. This is, you're taking the tablets. Where are you taking the tablets to? You know? 
It's like, where are you, where are you, you're, you're taking my keys to the car, and you're going to, where are you going? Where are you going with my car, right? We're going, right? We're going three days journey. Well, what are you doing that for? Why did they do that? And this was throughout the, their entire traveling to the desert, three days journey. You, so why? Have you heard this before? No? Because they needed to grow up. Okay? <laughs> Just like a child who needs to learn how to walk. The father puts the child down, takes a few steps back. The child needs to learn how to walk. Hmm. He won't be able to learn how to walk if the father's holding his hand the whole time, or parents holding his hand or holding them all the time. They will not learn how to walk. So now, all of a sudden, here they are in the desert, and it's lights out. They take the Ark of the Covenant, three days journey. You guys got to, you guys got to start to think on your own. Okay? Where's the light? Hmm. Okay? That was developing a vessel. Okay? Lights out. You can have it several times in your day, or your week. Right? Lights out. Oh my God, where's God? Where's God here? Where are you, God? You're hidden, so hidden from me. God wants to give an opportunity to make a vessel. Now, if you say that and you pray, you say, God, I know. It just seems like it's so dark. What are you doing? And I, and, but, but you have to know, and all of us do know deep inside, this is my opportunity to make a vessel. Hmm. And then you have to ask the right questions. You have to push the right buttons in order to... Thank you, God, for giving me the ability to now have a better connection with you, right? For me to develop within myself the ability, right? To make a vessel of myself only to receive light in the right way, okay? That's kaolin. And that's like, I gave you like a little example of, of, of a kli. And the life force itself is called in the name of light, okay? Komo shehakli mekaste al ma shebetoko, just like that a vessel will cover what that it is inside of it. So also the aspect of this simsum, the formula of this simsum, covers and blocks the light and the life force which is pouring on it. I don't know if I translated it like the way they did. Okay? It's almost the same. Okay. Okay, so now we get the concept of what a vessel is and what a the light is. Okay? Now comes this line here. The vessels. What are the vessels? The vessels are the letters. Hmm. Okay? What do I mean? What do we mean by the vessels are the letters? That we, we learned this before all the time. Mm -hmm. We say that God created the world with the ten utterances. And we say that the ten utterances are those letters. Those letters are our ability to grasp a concept. You can't do it without the thought word thought formula. The creation is just made like that. In this dimension, in our unlimited, in our ocean of unlimited worlds, in this dimension right now, God made this world to be called thought, word, thought. Okay? How do, what, how do we define that? This is the first thing my, my Rosh Hashiva taught me. Hmm. Thought, word, thought. God has a thought. He puts it into a word. A couple words. And then... I don't know why mine has changed. Who knows uh, cell phones? Mm -hmm. I had my old dial. I want my old dial back. Okay? Somehow my, my son. Thank you, God, for this plea. This wonderful <laughs> vessel. <laughs> I can hardly wait to see the life-enhancing experiences. Okay? So, in any case, yeah. He erased my Google Maps, too. And oh. here I am trying to find a place. I'm like, where's oh, the Google Maps? No. Where's the map? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, God, for now the vessel. Okay? You're making a vessel. Okay, now I forgot where I was. Thought, word, thought. Thought, thought, word, thought. Thing. Thought, word, thought. God has a thought. Thought, God. It was the phone. God has a thought. He puts it into a word. And from that word, you create the same thought in your mind. God has a thought, the Torah. He puts it into a word. That word is your vessel. That word's your clay, but within the clay there is light. Okay, there's a concept. Okay? And from the clay, from the word, you create the concept. You're supposed to create the same thought. That's to know God. Okay? 
when it means to know God, I had a recent Kiddush, oh, it's so deep. I don't know if I could even say it now. <laughs> I'll save it for another time. Okay? Because it's off topic. But the idea here of the Kalim are the letters. Because the letters are words. And the words form concepts. Okay? Because really it's all about how you think. Hmm. Okay? I was at a... I, I, had a, I have a degree in... Um, electric acupuncture. Right? Mm. I went to a school in France to get this degree, okay? Mm. A doctorate of electrical acupuncture. Never practiced, okay? But in any case, in the course, he was discussing how the way that we take in energy. Mm. Food, water, sun, right? Sensual. We take in energy through our senses. Even when you smell, Hearing things, you can hear a great con. But the main, the highest that he ranked was thoughts. Hmm. Thoughts is number one in terms of your energy level. Okay? Because if you think in, you could be eating the greatest foods, right? And exercising, but if you're think, thinking depressing thoughts, boom. Hmm. Right? You're having the worst time. And you, you will become depleted with energy. Enough thought, depressing thoughts. Okay? Thoughts is number one. So thought, word, thought, right? We're supposed to get the godlike thoughts in our minds from the vessels. Okay? So he says, mm -hmm, the Kalim are the divine letters. Okay? See, look what it says here in the note here. In the same way letters serve to reveal thought, yet at the same time they limit it. Right? For speech cannot convey all that is all that is in the mind of the thinker. Thought word thought. Okay? Mm. You can get something, but are you gonna get the real the whole thought? Can you know how sometimes people try to explain it to you? Oh man, sometimes. You just gotta tell people who want to, you know, they ramble. And like, can you just cut that down to like ten words, man? What are you saying? Okay. <laughs> describing a dream. Right? Okay. Sometimes I did. I used to tell people, you want something to say? 15 words. I mean, I would like, he short circuited. <laughs> he was like trying to count. I said, it doesn't have to be exact, but just, okay? Summarize. <laughs> they have to do their own little sim sim, okay? Because <laughs> they're all into expansiveness, right? And they expand everybody else's life by taking your time, by expanding their like, life story, okay? Okay, so, so, um, so the letters, they also conceal, okay? So they do both, okay? Now the letters, as they sit on the page, if they don't have any vowels to them, mm. they ain't going anywhere, okay? So the Kli is just a dead Kli. It needs the aspect of light in it. And the aspect of light, actually, are the vowels. They are the highest forms of light. But they're so high that we can't even grasp it. Because really, it's just a vowel. It's just a kamats or a patach or a a e a o a a a a. No one communicates like that except for maybe if you're in Africa, okay? But somehow they have some kind of form of communication, okay? They everybody's got letters. I don't know if there's any. I don't know what the Chinese. It's letters or it's symbols or something. How they're letter? How they're symbols, symbols yeah. right? Still, it's something that has some kind of thought that's constricted into this form, hmm. okay? Still, you need the vowel. It has to move. The gas, the car needs gas. The gas for the letters is the vowels. The vowels come from a higher place. They come from way high. They come from the world of Bria. Hmm. Okay? Letters are all the Masiya. They're the, la they're the last, right? And then you'll have the, the, the crowns of the letters, which is Yutsira. Then you'll have the, the vowels, which are from Olam Habriya. And then you'll have the cantillation. Hmm. The cantillation, which is Olam Atsilut. Okay, when the guy, who's, when the person who's reading the Sefer Torah, because the book, the book of the scroll of the Sefer Torah doesn't have vowels and doesn't have cantillation, they don't have no markings in it. It just has the, the letters and and the crowns of the letters. It doesn't have see because why? When the person who's reading the Sefer Torah, he from his mind is bringing from the Olam Atzilut the thoughts there, the power, the energy, and the Olam Habriya into his reading. He has to do it, okay? That's why a lot of places are very mockpeed 
for sure you got to be mock beat on how the words are pronounced. And if you don't, they'll catch you. They got ten guys going shouting out, right? It's Abba, Abba, right? Or you know, because he said Avo, right? Whatever it is, they they'll scream at him, right? So he's bringing a certain sublime energy into the reading, and that's the tikkun. Hmm. Uh, to have those, that's why you have to have a reading. You have to have a reading three times a week in a place in a makom Torah. You have to have those readings, okay? Because it's like, it's like your nuclear reactor. It's got to be going. There's many forms of it, but that's like the first and main form of it. And then you have the people studying all the time, which makes it a greater fire. But you got to have a fire. So that's the fire, okay? If you don't have, if I have a place that doesn't have a regular Torah reading, it's a problem, okay? So you don't, because you don't have a fire, okay? So, so the vowels are coming from a very high place, but you see the vowels really don't, they say even, I think Rabbi Kaplan brings down in Sefer Yitzira, that I, ted, I said that the ten spherot were belima, without whatness, you can't figure them out. So there's a view that holds the vowels are the ten spherot, because a vowel is just a vowel, if you look at it mm. as it is. It's just an ah sound. Ah, uh, okay, what do I mean? Okay, it needs to be with a letter, and then, and then you got something, and then you can make a concept, then you can make a word, then you can make a thought in your, in your, in your mind, okay? Okay, so, going on here. Oh, by the way, so the Baal Shem Tov does say something really powerful. He says, if a person has a, a problem with something, whatever it is, anger, jealousy, or... Uh, his eyes go to the wrong places where he shouldn't go, or, you know, any number of problems or issues where he has this evil inclination that pulls him out from doing the service of God. A habit. And he needs to overcome that habit, or sometimes he's just like, you know. So he should say the verse wherever it applies, whatever, whatever that challenge is, whatever his challenge is, so, you know. He should picture the verse, the letters, with the vowels, hmm. and say it. Oh. But, you, but, but the, in, in, the thing is to picture it with the vowels, because then you're drawing from a higher place, the light. It's not just the words, lo sasuru acharei levavchem v'acharei nechem, which means don't go after your, 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 your heart and your eyes, which cause you to go astray. Hmm. So you got to picture it with the vowels, right? And then it will be, you'll be able to, then it'll pass. It'll cause this suddenly urge to eat cake, right? will pass from you, okay? Okay? Because I'm thinking of cake right now, okay? <laughs> I got those M&Ms over there. They got like a lifetime supply of M&Ms over there that's calling my name. Okay? Yeah, sugar junkie, okay? So the Kalim are the divine letters. Let me see what it says here. Okay. And those roots, whose roots... Oh, I forgot the safer. You see, I was, I was on the phone, and then that was it. Oh, maybe it's in there. It's in my, one second. Did I bring it? No, I didn't pack it. Okay, fine. It's another cleat. Okay. <laughs> A lot of Kalim today. Okay. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> And the Kalim are the divine letters whose roots are from the five terminal letters of Mansapach. Mansapach are, the, are considered to be the five letters that can be doubled in the Aleph Beit. In other words, you have a Mem that's in the middle of a word that has the form here, and then you have a Mem Sofit. Mem Sofit is called the final Mem. Mm -hmm. So you only have five final letters. Okay? We only have, in our tradition, Five final letters that are considered to be finals. Why? Huh? Huh? Come on. Let's let this big expert uh, Hebrew professors explain. Okay? No, they can't explain. Okay? Thank God we have the RE, all right, and the Kabbalists and all the Rebbe's who explain it. Okay? Why five final letters? Why do we have to have that? It doesn't make sense. What's the big deal if you put a, a mem, a regular mem, at the end of the letters? Like, we can't read it without it? Why do you have to have that? 
Right? Interesting phenomenon. Okay. We're going to get a little deep insight here. These five places, these five final letters, he says, which are the five restraining forces. We call it the five gvurot. Hmm. Okay? So he says here in the note, these five letters terminate a word, and no other letters may follow them, inasmuch as this is an act of limitation of gvura. Okay? In other words, it's a, I have to go into a little bit of a complicated kind of scenario, but in terms of when we build um, a vessel, okay, we say in tradition, when we're building an experience or we're making a connection, there's ten things that go into that connection. There's called the five gavurot and the five chasadim. Hmm. Five gavurot and five chasadim. Really, when we'll get into later classes when I talk about the building of the female partsuf, nukva, hmm. and za, and how, does, how do we build the female partsuf? How do we build the vessel? A vessel was built with five gavurot, okay? These five gavurot, actually, he says here, that divide and separate the breath and voice in the five organs of speech in order that the 22 letters shall be formed. What does it say by this? We say that really we know that if we bring it down and say for Yetzira, I made copies. Where are those copies? Mm -hmm. Right here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the five organs of speech that you have here in Sefer Yetzirah. The Book of Formation, one of our oldest books. It speaks about five goings out of the mouth, right? Two, three, right? Mm -hmm. So there's basically five sets of, there's, there's sets of letters that are come out that originate from different parts of our mouths. You have labial letters, which come out from the lips. You'll have guttural letters, which come out from, right, deep in the throat. Right? You'll have dental letters, which come from the teeth, like a shin. Shin. A shin. It comes from the teeth. Shin. It's a teeth letter. Mm -hmm. huh. Okay? You'll have a, 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 you'll have a tongue letters. Lamed. Lamed. Okay? You'll have five different places where all the letters come out from five different places in the mouth. Okay, these are the five tototza peh, very big stuff here. Because we're understanding we're created in the image of likeness of God. And when God was creating the world, he created it with two things. We discussed this already. Voice is just this ah. Uh, and then there's where it's cut in your mouth. Five different places where you're going to cut the energy. Hmm. When you cut, limit, right? So you're making a vessel. It's weird language. If you think about it, really, it's really quite amazing that we just cut at five different places in our mouths and somehow our ears, the other person's he ear hears it and then re-puts it together and refigures it together. Mm. It's really quite unbelievable, the, 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 this concept of communication like this. Mm. And you'll have 70 different languages where they're cutting their <laughs> letters and they're making sense to this guy when I don't understand a freaking word he says, okay? <laughs> right? No, I don't, no comprendes. No, uh, no español. Uh, okay. So, so, so apparently, we got to understand these five places come from originally these five letters. In other words, the five places where all of the 22 letters are coming out, the original place are these five letters. Manzapach, it's known. These are the dinim. These letters are din, are constriction, and they are the source of all constriction. All constriction, all hiddenness comes from these five letters. Wow. And all the other 22 letters follow from these five. And I forgot the book, of course. I had my Eitz Chaim, and I was going through it a little bit this morning, but of course I got family, I, you know, at home, and I got situations going on and phone calls and ringing, and I couldn't go through it, but it said, like, Tzadik, all of these letters come from it. All of the, the first set of letters come from the tzadi, which is, right, the gutturals. Olive, het, hay, iron, come from tzadi. Okay? And then it said this letter, these letters come from this letter. And each one of the five letters, all of these five different sets of letters that are coming out from different places in the mouth, 
come from one of these five. Okay, it's the root of mm. all the forces of constriction are in Manzapach. And there's ways that we can fix it, because the idea really is eventually, and our goal is to sweeten the judgments. Okay, it's like what you had by the uh, subjugation, mm. separation, and then Hamtaka, which mm. is the sweetening. Mm. Everybody's trying to get to the sweetening. Okay? Mm. But first you have to know where it comes from. Okay? So anyways, all of the letters come from these five letters. Okay? The 22 letters are, are formed, and I saw in her a note. The five motos apea, kolelas kol kape ot advan, komose kalube ot echad shel manzapach, and ivair ata elo hachimisha gvurot. Okay. Just like what I explained here. Okay. Going on. So the source of the five restraining forces is what we call what? Botsina de Cardunisa. Okay? This is a term that they bring down in the Zohar light. Uh, the Zohar lot. Botsina de Cardunisa means light from dark. Really, this is what we have to do all. This is why Hashem gives us the dark places, okay? The light from the dark, which is what we call in the, the highest realms of all. He calls it the supernal gavura of Atik Yomin, literally translates ancient of days. And he says this is the realm which transcends all worlds, including Atzilut. It's above Atzilut. And the source of the kindnesses is also chesed of Atik Yomin, as is known to those well-versed in the esoteric wisdom. Okay? So, the, the point here is the Gevura, the Gevura would come from a very, very high place. It doesn't come from a low place. Holy the fact God. that God's, con God's concealing Himself comes from way high. A realm, don't forget, we have our, the realm above us, which we call it Ein Sof, called Unlimited. I think I went over with you the parts of him maybe really briefly one time. But, you know, there's, there's our level. There's what we call it Ain Sof, what we call it unlimited. Okay? Infinite. Infinity. Infinity. Right? Infinity is only one part suf called Zeran Pim, small face. There's, a level, there's layers of infinity above that infinity. The, le le the layer of infinity above Ein Sof, above, above that, there's the layers of infinity. And then there's, it's called Ima, Mother. And then there's an infinity above that, which is called Abba. And then there's one above that, right? Which is called Arich Anpin, Long Face. Okay? And then there's an infinity above that. That's called the Tikyomin, Way above. In other words, you think like, wow, infinity. Oh, I can meditate it all day. It just never ends. Yeah, well, hey. <laughs> you know, we're in the middle of, a, of an event right now that is so big, we have absolutely no idea what it is. Okay? We're going to end off with that, okay? We are involved right now. You are in an event which is way beyond what you could possibly imagine. And here you are somehow experiencing some existence... But really, the real gist of this is, in terms of God's view, it doesn't exist. Because only he's, He is all there is. And we're in God's dreams right now. Okay? So you can either view it from the bottom up. Right? You hit me. I hit you back. You hit me so hard. You hit me harder. I hit you did ten times. You hit me twice. Right? You can play the little baby games down here. Or you can look at it from the top down. No one knows, no one knows my Moshe like me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know my Moshe. Okay? So you can look at it, wow, how God looks at us. If we would only look at us the way God looks at us. Really. Take that home. If we can only view ourselves as God views us, He loves us, He's crazy about us. He's crazy about us. Okay? And He's always trying to build a vessel and we're trying to expand our vessel. And our vessel, the main vessel is, of course, our mind and our ability to receive the greater light, right? Which is the concept, okay? Because once you got the concept, then things flow more smoother. And the highest level of concept is God is all there is. Mm. 
God is running everything, everything in my life. And now you can go to your to the rest of your week and your Shabbos saying, thank you God for the ability to make this vessel. Thank you God for the ability to make this vessel. Okay? We'll stop now. So I have a question. Yeah. Um,